So with the Florida parts truck that I bought, I had enough to repair the cab off my truck. I didn't have a roof skin, so I would have had to buy that separately. Junkyards wanted about 400 bucks for that. So instead, I found this cab. It's a Texas truck in the right color. And it came with some little bonuses. It came with my dash, my center console, my headliner, even seat belts. This is all stuff that would have added to my build that I got with the cost of just the cab. I also got some extra stuff I can sell that I'm not gonna use. Like the seats, the glass, wiper motor, and some trim pieces. Now, I did say that this truck was gonna be better than before the accident. If you notice when we looked at the bottom of the truck, there was a lot of rust on it because it had been driven in the Midwest for a couple winters. And though I would have changed the rocker on this side and the floor when I fixed it, the rocker on the other side, which is where these GM trucks love to rust, would still be original. So by changing the whole cab, I have a nice solid body to work with. No rust anywhere. We're gonna put it on a frame that has no rust, with brake lines that have no rust, and a front end that has no rust. So we have taken a truck that had some rust on it and brought it back to a rust-free truck. Like I said, it's going to be better than before the accident. The first thing we gotta do is just strip both trucks completely down to the shell and go from there. Okay, the first thing we have to do is pull the doors off. Helps if you have a place to put these. The parts are undamaged and if you want to keep them that way, you put them somewhere where you're not going to have to move them a hundred times. These go in a shipping container. I stack them up in the corner and I don't bring them out until it's time to put them back on the truck. If you're doing this at home, you can use the uh, spare bedroom. If you're married, you might not want to do that. Now I'm pulling the wiring harness out of the back door, disconnecting it from the body. If you watch my G8 video, I'll put a link in there, up above there. I'll show you in depth what I'm doing there, how it comes apart. Now I'm going to use my little door check secret from the G8 video, since I have to take this door panel off anyway. It's not really a secret anymore. Now we got the doors out of the way, we can pull the seats out. I already had them disconnected. It was easier to do when the truck still had power. So now I'll pull out what's left of the console. Most of the mounting tabs are broken. They kind of just lifted right out. Put the cover back on it so I don't lose it easier to store that way. We're going to pull the sub out. Go on to the rear seat, disconnect the seat belt first and fish it through there. There's about eight bolts across the bottom. Once you take all those out you can lift the seats straight up the latch in the back it's actually two separate seats you can take them apart if you want I'm gonna take them out and then I'll take them apart just so they're easier to handle it's just two bolts that hold them together We're going to pull out the jack bracket and the seat belts so we can pull the carpeting out. Pull the rear piece out first.
Now I'll pull the front out. Now onto the wiper arms. And the cowl screen. Disconnect the wiper motor. Fish the wire out of there. Then we can unbolt the wiper motor. And remove the wiper motor. Now we're going to take the windshield out. I'm usually not very good at this. I end up breaking them. But this one was already broke, so didn't have anything to lose. It's better than paying the glass guys to do it. I did end up getting the one out of the other cab without breaking it, only because I didn't need it. If I needed it, I definitely would have broke it. Now we're going to pull the steering column out, drop the lower knee bolster there, there's a duct on the bottom we're going to take out so we can get the metal bracket out. The steering column's collapsed so there's not a whole lot of room in there like there normally is. Disconnect the shift cable, a couple wiring harnesses, we can unbolt it and fish it out of there. Helps that you take the key out of it so that the steering wheel doesn't turn, you don't want to ruin the clock spring. So I just left the key out of it and left it in the lock position. GM steering columns. Unplug. Everything complete. You don't have to disconnect anything in the column itself. Now we're going to pull the radio out. Wiggle and pull. That's how a lot of this car comes apart. Take the cluster out. Take the top trim piece off. Now we can take the bezel off. Wiggle and pull. Now we can get to the bolts for the cluster. Just one plug on the back. Now we're going to pull the glove boxes out. A few screws. And then wiggle and pull. Now we're going to take out the hundred screws that are holding the dash pad on. Luckily they're all the same size, so you don't have to worry about where they go. As long as you don't have any left over when you're done, you're good. Took this trim piece off to make sure there's no screws behind it. Could have left it on. The airbag comes out with the dash pad, so we have to unbolt that. We're done with the bottom. I'll take the top off. Now just fish the wires through as you pull it out. The whole reason we had to change this was because the passenger airbag went off. Now I'm going to pull out this little piece up here. It's separate from the rest of the dash. Now we're going to unbolt our dash, the metal part, and the plastic inner piece. Comes off with the wire harness and everything. Now we're going to take the heater box off. All these bolts are from the outside. Just wiggle and pull.
So I kind of figured after seeing the firewall of the cab, I might find a crack in my heater box. And I did. It's cracked all the way through. So it's kind of a bummer because these things aren't cheap. If I only had another one somewhere. Oh, I do. It's right there. Another reason I bought a parts truck. Little stuff like that really adds up. Unfortunately, because today is Wednesday and I can't leave that in here, I'm not gonna pull the dash out of it. So I won't be able to get my cab all put back together. I'll get everything switched over so that Friday, when I pull that thing in to yank the cab off, I'll pull the dash out of it and switch over my pedals, my emergency brake, and now the heater box. Throw the dash in, be all set. Sometimes things just don't work out like you planned. Now we're gonna take the electrical box out and the foot well there. Take the emergency brake off. Pillar was kind of bent, so kind of had to work it to get it out. Fish the wiring harness. That's the main body harness. Runs across the floor. Gonna pull it out of our way for now. Change that later. We're going to take the brake booster off, disconnect the brake pedal, pull the four bolts out to hold the booster on, and wiggle and pull. I'll take the pedal assembly out. Now we'll pull the insulation off the firewall. And go put it in our new one. This is our new cab. So we put it back together the exact opposite way we took it apart. There's that main body harness. Kind of find a spot that you can't mess up. For me, it was the center. Then I just kind of worked around it. Everything else kind of laid out where it belonged. Lay it all out and then snap it all in and screw it in. Then we're going to put the antenna in. the antenna harness. Now we're going to put the roof airbags in, curtain airbags, whatever you want to call them. These are brand new from GM. some screws and some clips so the screws I just thread a couple turns clips you just push in and then zip them all in with the impact same thing on this side Now we're going to put the seatbelts in for the rear. Centers just push in. The bolt on the top of the bottom. And 
And this one, for some reason, I did the exact opposite way. I started at the top and worked down. Don't know which method was better. It seemed to be about the same to me. Don't know why I chose to do it differently. Now we're going to put the headliner in. This is the one that came with our used cab, but the wiring harness out of the original truck. And this is when it goes in normally from the factory before the dash. You can take them out with the dash in, but it's a real pain. It also helps to have the windshield out so you can slide it in there instead of trying to squeeze it through a door. Now we just put our sun visors in, our grab handles, and our light. We'll run the wires down the pillar, plug them into our junction box down below. We'll put the overhead console in. Just pushes in after you plug everything in. Now we're going to swap over our dash harness onto our new dash. The plastic was cracked on the driver's side where the steering column collapsed on it and the metal part was bent from the pillar being back. So we're just going to use the stuff that came with our cab. But the wiring harness for the truck we're fixing has a lot more wires in it because it has a lot more options. So in order to get it apart, you gotta take the black piece off. This one I didn't take it all the way off. I just kind of pulled enough of it off to get the wiring harness out. Disconnect some of the duct work. Then we start pulling the wiring harness off. Disconnect some of the modules. All right, fish the wiring harness out. dash piece and bring in our new one. We're going to pull the plastic off so we don't have to work around it like we did the last time. And just like the other harness you kind of find a spot that you can't mess up. This one it had a contour of the wiring harness that went with the dash. So I just kind of slid that in and then everything else kind of fell into place. I'll put the plastic back on, fish the wires through.
if you don't remember where to put them, it helps if you're making a video for YouTube. You can always look back at the video. I wanted to get this done, even though I can't put this piece in, because I really don't like doing this. So I'm getting it out of the way for the big weekend coming, because I would drag my feet on this part when I don't have a lot of time to begin with. So now we're just going to put all our modules back in. And I'll just set the dash inside the cab and wait until we get our other cab apart for the parts we need underneath. So in a perfect world, I would have had a good heater box. That would allow me to put my dash in, put my console, my carpet, my seats, and all my trim panels in the cab. So that on Friday when I'm ready to, I can just drop the cab down on the frame and it's all set. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to pull the other truck apart and start swapping stuff over. It's not a huge deal because everything you've seen in the videos to date, plus what's in the next video, I used to do in one weekend. That was when I was younger perhaps not quite as wise and definitely a lot faster. So now I'm trying to make things a little easier on myself and I do a lot of the prep work so that I have an easier weekend. And by easier, I mean 16 hour shifts. So we'll see how that goes. But next weekend will be the big video. It's when the truck's really gonna take shape. My plan is to drive the brown truck in on Friday and drive the black truck out on Sunday. Of course, it's gonna need a little paint work and body work, but that's for my guys and my part is basically done. I'll have to put it together when they're done, but that's easy. So subscribe if you wanna see how that works out or if you want to see some of my other builds or my tutorial videos. Like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.